ARMS is an interesting one to talk about. It was one of the earliest games Nintendo released on the Switch, and although it got a fair bit of interest and attention back then, once Splatoon 2 came out, ARMS sort of disappeared off everyone's radar, and I never heard anyone really talk about it since. And that was until a few months ago, when it was revealed that the next fighter for Smash Bros Ultimate will be a rep from ARMS. This has certainly renewed my interest in the game, and I imagine other people are glancing in this game's direction too. So I am here to help you decide whether this is a game you should extend yourself to, or keep well out of arm's reach. It launched three years ago, so is arms worth playing after the hype? So let's take a look at what you're getting with the game. At launch, there were 10 characters and 10 stages. It has since received a bunch of free updates, which included the addition of 5 new characters and stages. It may not seem like much, but there is variety in how each character looks and plays. Ninjara is fast and vanishes as he dodges. Master Mummy is big and strong and he can heal as he guards. Bite has his robot dog bark helping him out. And Helix... Well, Helix is just really weird. They all have unique looks to them as well, with one exception. You have Twintel using her hair, Mechanica is in a huge mech, Kid Cobra is all snake-like, and Helix... well, Helix is just weird. So I've briefly touched on how some of them differ in fighting, but what about the fighting itself? The main gimmick of the game is the extendable arms, used for that all-important punching. You can punch, dodge, grab, jump and block. That sounds easy enough to get into, but there is a bit more depth to it than that. As you fight, you can charge up your arms, and when you have a charged arm, it has a status effect on your opponent if you land a hit, such as freezing them or inking their screen. There are many different types of arms which serve as the main unlockable of the game. You have three to choose from in each match, and you can mix and match which ones you have on each arm. You have to assign which three arms are available for each character in the main menu under the Set Arms option. Which may seem like a weird decision, but when playing multiplayer, I imagine it would be annoying if your opponent spent ages choosing between the many arms they want to set, so limiting it to three once you're in the match was a wise decision overall. The arms don't just work differently for status effects, how they are deployed can differ too such as the boxing glove hitting them straight on, but the hammer would stretch out and hit them in a different way. There's also ones like these dragons that work like projectiles, and there are plenty of others to choose from too. Each character starts off with arms unique to them, but when you go into the get arms mode, you can unlock every single arm for every single character. This can also work as a target practice mode and help you get to grips with the controls. Speaking of the controls, the initial trailer for this game emphasised the fact that this game used motion controls. But before anyone gets worried, I have two pieces of good news for you. Firstly, the motion controls work well. Secondly, and most importantly, they are completely optional. This is fully playable in handheld mode or with the Pro Controller, and the controls are fully customisable too. When using motion controls, movement is done by tilting the Joy-Cons in the same direction, blocking is achieved by tilting them towards each other, and simply throw a punch to send that fist flying towards your opponent. Twisting the Joy-Con lets you aim the arm mid-flight. They are extremely responsive and I haven't had a single issue with them, and the rumble also feels very satisfying. The fights themselves are an absolute joy. Once you get the hang of how the mechanics work, you'll be jumping and dodging all over the place, trying to get that extra punch in. As you'd expect, shielding blocks punches, grabs break through shields, and punches break through grab attempts. Keeping an eye on your opponent and making split second decisions on what to do next is crucial. You can charge up your power meter as you play, and when it is full, you can unleash the flurry rush which lets you perform a huge flurry attack and deal a lot of damage. The stages themselves are varied. As I said, there are 15, each themed after the character it comes with. They are each distinctive, and thankfully, none of them are too hazardous. You can't blame the stage for any of your downfalls here. The gimmicks on the stage are minimal and not too intrusive. One has trampolines around the outside you can bounce on, 
One has rising platforms you can destroy, some have pillars you can hide behind or knock down, and one of them has these awesome spinning hoverboard things you can ride, and I always lose on this stage because I'm too busy having fun of it, I forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe I can blame the stage on this one. So that's how the fighting and stages work. What about the game modes? Well there's the Grand Prix, which works like your standard arcade mode. Outside of that you can have your standard single fights, which also includes a mode for up to four players. There's V-Ball, which is basically volleyball, you better prevent the ball from landing on your side lest it explodes. Hoops, where you have a basketball net and you have to grab your opponent to dunk them through for points. Skill Shot, where you compete for a high score at breaking targets. You stand opposite each other so you can still attack your opponent to stun them momentarily and grab all of those lovely points yourself. Headlock Scramble is a fight where grabbing the headlock mask can give you a nice advantage. There is also 1 on 100 which acts as the game's survival mode. Defeat 100 opponents before you get defeated yourself. Simple enough right? And you also have Arms Test where you get assigned random arms for each match and see how high a win streak you can get. So there is quite a bit to do here, although I do find the V-Ball and Hoops modes to be just novelties that I don't come back to all that often. Graphically, the game looks fantastic. It has a cartoony art style with bold colours that stand out. Even in the darker stages, it's never too dark that you can't see what's going on. It's always clear, the characters look distinctive, and even if some seem a bit one note at first, I mean the two mascot characters are called Spring Man and Ribbon Girl, their personalities do shine through and I have taken a liking to all of them, even Springtron. The animations also play a big part in portraying the characters, just look at the sassy way Twin Tail moves. Master Mummy, he just loves to smash. And Helix, well, he's just weird. Then there are also the stages themselves. There are a variety of locations, each representing a character, such as Miss Sango's jungle setting, the concert stage of Ribbon Girl with a lot of purple lighting, and Bite and Bark's beach setting as well. The crowds can look a bit flat, with a lot of clones doing the same actions, but I do like how in the scrapyard you can see people dressed as Mechanica. One little detail I do like is how the extendable arms themselves all differ from character to character. It might have been tempting to just have everyone use spring coils and call it a day, but Master Mummy has extendable bandages, Ninjara has chains, Helix has double Helix arms, which is appropriate. I always appreciate little touches like that and can't help but wonder if the characters were designed based on what materials they can make extendable. The UI is very clean and minimalistic, your health and power meter are displayed in the bottom right corner and you can easily see your opponent's health next to them. It's also very clear to see when an arm is charged up and the flurry rush changes the lighting with your character glowing yellow to emphasise the importance of the move. The game makes good use of colours to give you tells as to your opponent's moves. Yellow being the flurry rush as I just said, the shields are blue and the grabs have a green glow to them. They still happen fast but as you grow more adept at the game these little colour codes really give you a split second warning and time to adjust your strategy. As for the music, have a little listen. I really like the opening theme you hear when you boot the game up, it gets you pumped and ready to fight. The crowd chanting makes it feel like you're in a stadium, as if this is all one grand spectator sport. Each stage has a unique theme, appropriate for their setting, but the overall tone has a lot of energy to it, not letting you forget that you're here to fight. Being a Nintendo game, this sits at a full retail price and only occasionally gets a sale on the eShop. 
So whether this game has enough to keep you playing and be worth the price will depend on the player. For a single player, you might be well advised to avoid the full price, as this really is designed for multiplayer. But it's not all bad news, there are things to collect through gameplay. Unlocking all the arms will take a long time, and there is also an achievement system where you unlock badges. But unfortunately, the game doesn't tell you how to unlock the badge until you've already unlocked it, so chasing them does lose its value that way. And let's take a look at the online mode. When the game first came out, this always worked well, finding partners was always quick and I never experienced lag personally. However, once Splatoon 2 came out, I was finding it harder to find a match, and whenever I did, it was always against someone who was insanely good at the game, so it was very one-sided. Looking at it for this review, that was still the case, but at least you're still able to play the game normally while it's taking its long search to find a partner. Although if you play party matches, which are unranked, I found them very easy to get into still. It shows a fun menu of your icons meeting up and places you in a random battle. It worked perfectly fine, I still had no lag, even with 4 players. Overall, ARMS is a fighting game that has an obvious gimmick, but one that works really well. It's very easy to get into, whatever the control style, but difficult to master, like a lot of fighting games I've played. The characters are varied, and although it won't take you too long to see everything the game has to offer, like with a lot of fighting games, its replay value in multiplayer can be endless. It's a quirky take on a one-on-one -on -one fighter, and although it doesn't have the most in-depth mechanics, it can provide a lot of fantastic multiplayer fun, and definitely a game you should reach out for. If you have a lot of opportunity for multiplayer gaming, this game is a solid 8 out of 10. But if you're primarily a single player, then this game sits at a 7 out of 10. Still a fun game, but not one you'd come back to as much. Thank you so much for watching this review. Have you tried this game? Has Smash Brothers made you take interest in this one? Or has it tempted you back if you played it several years ago? Let me know in the comments down below, and while you're down there, clicking that thumbs up button would really make my day, as well as clicking that subscribe button to join the party and keep up with our future videos. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.